So as with any Next.js project, we first need to create the Next.js application. So I've already done that just to speed up things on my side. But what I've done is I have navigated into my desktop and then into a folder that is called YT videos. And then I've run the command npx create next app. And then I've called it next book finder. That's why you can see that I am now in that particular folder. And then because I want to use Tailwind CSS, I've added the dash dash Tailwind flag as well as the dash dash ES linked flag. And then you can simply run this command and then say yes to every prompt that you're going to get such as TypeScript and so on and so forth. But I don't want that to run otherwise it's going to mess this up. So you simply say yes to every prompt such as do you want to use TypeScript? We are not using TypeScript so simply say no. And then uh, I've just realized that that is some contradictory statement. Simply say yes to the default prompts that you're going to get. Don't change anything on the default default prompts so that you can run your application as I have mine inside here. And then once it finishes, you can simply say npm run dev, which is going to open up our application on localhost 3000, and then we can begin. And so if we navigate to localhost 3000 in our browser, this is what we are met with as our first page. So what I want to do first of all is I want to go ahead and clear out my app folder and then my page.js. So I want to clear all of this out because I don't want the default template here. So I'm just going to say RFC, which is going to generate a React functional component for me. If it does today, if it doesn't, I can just type it out. Okay, there we go. So page, and then I'm going to rename this to home so that when I save that, then we're only going to see home on the screen right there. Now, in our globals.css, I'm not going to change anything because I actually want to use the black background here. So the CSS here is going to remain as it is, and we are not even going to touch anything inside here. So you can simply close that out. And because we're using Tailwind, I want to show you a very interesting package that Tailwind has with Prettier. So it allows us to format Tailwind classes in the form that goes along with BEM, which is a styling convention for CSS. So if you go into GitHub, I can't remember the link, but I'm going to link it in the description. So this is the link right here. And the package is called Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. So the way we install it is right here. So npm install minus D Prettier and then Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. So just copy this link and then add a new terminal here. And then we can paste it in. And then as that installs, we need to create a Prettier.rc file inside our workspace. So copy this once again, and then make sure that you're in your workspace and then right click and say new file. And then it's called dot prettier RC. And then simply paste this in and then remember to remove this comment, otherwise you're going to get an error. So save that. And then once this finishes installing, what it is going to do is if I go ahead and add some tailing classes here, such as text white, and then font bold, and then margin bottom 20, and then text center, something like that. Now it has finished installing. So what should happen here is that these classes should now be formatted in the correct way. So when I save this, look at what happens. Okay, okay, there we go. It just took a while to load. So you can see that now margin bottom is added first, then text center, then font bold, then text white. So that is the plugin that we're going to be using in this project. It's just going to help us to structure our Tailwind CSS much better, our styling much better. So inside here, I don't want the home, obviously. Inside here, we're going to have a div, which is not going to have these classes, actually. It's going to have classes as follows. It's going to have a padding on the x-axis of 6, a padding on the y of 20, and then it's going to have a container max width, and then an mx of auto. And then inside here, I'm going to have an h1 that says categories, categories. But we're going to substitute this with some actual text once we get the data from the API. So save that and then let's see what we have on the screen. We can close that. We have categories. So let's center this text. So class name, text center. So text dash center, margin bottom of eight, font bold and text white. But actually not, we don't really need text white because it is already added in our global.css. So we don't need to add text right there. And there we go. So 
text we need to increase it so text dash for xl to increase it there we go now let's go ahead and jump inside the new york times api so then nytimes.com so newyorktimes.com and then if you go here then it should be i can't remember let me see nytimes api there we go so the the link is developer.nytimes.com so that is the link you can simply click on this to open it up and then of course if you don't have an account then you simply need to go ahead and create an account with them and as you can see it has already logged me in so what we need to do here is i need to go ahead and create an application so if i click on apps here then you'll see that i have a bunch of apps but the latest one is this one which i created called nyt hardcore fiction and then the description is a list of best-selling hardcore fiction books and you can see the others that we have done before i think i recorded these ones and i published it on youtube as well but if you're completely new to this api what you can do is create a new app so simply go ahead and say plus new app and then give your app a name here and then give it a description of course not what i'm typing inside here but you get the gist and then once you do that we're going to be using the books api right here so make sure that once you create once you give your app name and description go ahead and enable the books api and then once you enable it you can click on save now you can see that the new york times has a bunch more apis but in this case we're only using the books api but i challenge you to go ahead and try to create an application using these other apis it's going to be quite interesting i assure you so once you enable the books api click on save and then once you click on save you can now go ahead and visit your apps and then you're going to have your application right there now what i'm going to be using is this one which i created on april 19th so if i open this you will see that i now have access to my api key right here and don't worry about this i'm showing this one for the video but i'm going to create a new one i'm going to revoke this one so that i don't uh, you know get issues let me just say it like that so this is the api key that i'm going to be using and once you create your own application you're going to be issued with your own api key so what i'm going to do is copy this api key and then back inside our application i'm going to create a new file in our workspace called dot env dot local and then inside here i'm going to say next underscore public public underscore api underscore key and then set this equal to the api key that i copied so i'm going to save that and this is going to be very useful because we're going to be fetching our data using this api key now if i go back into our dashboard and i go into apis then you'll see that we have access to the books api right here so if i open this up we're going to be taken into the documentation and for our first page this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting in order to get all the categories of books so let me go ahead and find the call right here so it should be this one let me see let me see i can't remember what i was using even so let's go ahead and do this let me just go ahead and open this in a new tab and then i'm going to go ahead and su substitute this part right here with sorry wait a minute it should be let's see list forward slash names to json so knee lists forward slash names dot json and then for our api key i'm just going to place this in like so and then we should get the list there we go so this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting and in the next video we're going to begin with this